Well, 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 what do we have here? Ladies and gentlemen, these are the EA-825 and the EA-824 four liter twin turbo hot V V8s from Audi. In the middle here, we have the latest version of the EA-825. And over here we have what's known as one of the early versions of the EA-825. If you look at the 24 and the 25, I know I've still got a lot of accessories on the 25 over here. I'm gonna grab a seat so I can get a little more comfortable. The overall layout is generally the same. You've got your exhaust manifolds that sit in the middle. Exhaust manifolds that sit in the middle. Thermostat and cooling up here. Thermostat and cooling over here. The biggest difference between the two right off the bat is the oil pan and the location of the oil cooler. If you look at the 24, you'll notice it's got these big bat wings that kind of stick off to the side here. And in those bat wings, you've actually got accessories drives. So this is where your water pump goes. There's a drive shaft there that plugs in. And then there's a drive shaft there that couples back there for your, um, I think it's the alternator or air conditioning pump. I can't remember which one goes there. Um, anyways, over here on the side, you also notice that it's got a split block design here. So you've got oil pump, you've got stage one split block design, and then you've actually got an upper block design as well. Whereas over here, the block itself is a single casting. So those are not different at all. Um, there is no split in the block or the case uh, where it comes up to the actual um, crankshaft itself here. The other thing that I noticed right off the bat was that the 824 has the oil filter dead smack in the middle here. Whereas if you come over to the, or correction, this is the 825. The 24 does not have the oil filter there. The 824 also has the um, crankcase that ends up sliding in here and it takes up space up to about right there. The 25 does not. That's actually where the oil cooler, pardon my spark plugs, ended up getting located. Uh, it is actually down in the valley here. And then um, another huge difference are the exhaust manifolds themselves. The 825 has a very small exhaust manifold. It is by comparison to the um, EA824 manifold. The 24 manifold is significantly larger. Um, it's got a, I mean, you should just look at the two side by side. It's got um, an integrated turbine housing and it takes up a ton of space. Um, while I'm over here, another big difference is the, um, the downpipes themselves. This is the 824 downpipe. It's quite large in diameter. And then the piping itself that attaches to it is like two and a quarter inch where, pardon my mess, I'm still getting the shop set up and I just yanked that 825 out. The catalyst in the um, EA825 is actually really small. And then it's got like a legit three inch downpipe outlet, which is pretty cool. And then the inlet is absolutely cavernous. I mean, it's about the size of my hand. It's, it's humongous. It's really, really nice. Um, another big difference is the 825 has air to air intercoolers where you've got two large cores, which are pretty decently sized from the factory. Um, the only thing I don't like about them is that they come with plastic intakes and I don't know how many of you guys have worked with the B fives, but unfortunately the plastic intakes start failing once you start pushing boost pressures up pretty significantly. Um, I did have these upwards of 30 PSI and I'm, I'm starting to notice that you're getting a little bit of I'm not sure if that's a shadow. No, there's definitely some oil collecting right there. So it looks like an intercooler upgrade may be in the future. Um, not super stoked about that, but the, the air to air intercooler for the 825 is 
um, a massive upgrade over the 24. And if you notice, it's a nice high density core, uh, good bar and plate design. Bar and plate means like you've actually got a square tube that runs in between each of the sets of fins and you just get a lot more surface area contact with the uh, fins themselves to help dissipate heat. Um, yeah, that downpipes and intercooler, massive, massive upgrade. Coming back over here. The next big thing that I noticed is actually the intake manifold design. Um, I'm grabbing it right now. So this is a passenger side intake manifold off of an EA825. And then if you look at the 24 right next to it over here, the 24 has integrated runner flaps like this guy's here. The, and it's got all this, um, the injectors themselves. That's another big one on the 24, actually physically attached to the intake manifold. Whereas on the 25, the injection system isn't down here. Where's the injection system? Crazy. Oh, look, high pressure fuel line comes in. They actually went with top feed injectors on the uh, EA25, which is, it produces a more efficient combustion event. Um, they also located the throttle bodies to the intake manifolds themselves, and the throttle bodies actually serve as the intake manifold runner flaps. So they, they keep the throttle body uh, partially closed, even during wide open throttle operation until airflow gets to specific points. Oh, look, another broken connector, fantastic. I just ordered this engine off of eBay. And it's a um, 2022 Audi SQ7 motor, and it's got uh, 690 miles on it or something like that. Uh, but it looks like the, the people who took it out didn't do the best of job, so I'm gonna end up having to spend a lot of time deep pinning connectors and Checking continuity, yay. Not stoked about that. Um, so yeah, they, they use the uh, throttle body for um, controlling the actual airflow into the motor uh, to distribute the air into the cylinders at the optimum velocity. So I've, in data logs, I've seen the throttle bodies remaining at like 60% closed through, uh, significant horsepower events. Like I, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but um, as we turn the motors on its side, you'll notice that the map sensor is actually located here. And this car has a lot of map sensors. And I, I mean a lot of them. It's pretty wild. Um, it's got some in the pipes over here. Now it's entirely possible that some of these are um, temp sensors and I'm I'm not super familiar with this motor yet. You guys are more or less kind of getting to learn it as I'm learning it. Um, but the 824 has flaps, the 25 does not. It does, utilizes the throttle bodies right there at the front of the motor versus the uh, EA 824. This is the anemic intercooler brick that is utilized in the 24. It's just, it's way too small. Um, for any kind of significant horsepower application. The throttle bodies are actually located in the valley. And this is that, um, actually, I think I can just, I'll take this out and I'll show you how this fits. So this big piece of junk, this thing comes out of a crash car. This big hunk of junk actually ends up sitting like right here. So this is more or less, I mean, it, the space constraints associated with the 824 when it's installed in the car. And then you come over here to the 25 and everything is like packaged really nicely and low and flat. Whereas the 824, it's, it stands up really tall above the valve covers. And like I said, it's, it's sitting up an extra half inch above where it normally would. But, um, yeah, the engine itself is a much more compact design all the way around on the EA825. And I know this one's really dirty, but um, I was absolutely shocked at how easy this motor is to work on, which was a really nice surprise. Um, 
total connections to get this thing out was coolant hose one. There's a coolant hose down here, coolant hose three, a couple of electrical connectors, obviously the ECU harness connectors, which just flop over on top of the motor. Uh, the downpipes themselves, uh, the um, EVAP line. I did remove the um, O2 sensors. Not really necessary. They could have just stayed in the downpipe, but I didn't want to unclip all the wiring harnesses and the uh, fuel line. Um, speaking of the fuel line, another really cool difference between the 824 and the 825 are the high pressure fuel pumps. Uh, the pumps on the 825 end up utilizing the, um, what's called the H hop, HDP5 Hopdruck Pumpe Funf from Bosch. And it is just an absolute beast of a pump. Um, I've already pushed uh, 30 megapascals of uh, fuel pressure through these pumps. Um, and they've easily handled it. And I, I know for sure that they can go higher. I, I just, I haven't leaned into them that hard yet. Um, which is really exciting. They've, they're an absolute beast of a pump. Whereas on the EA825, no matter how big of a piston you end up stuffing into those things, I have prototyped some pistons and tested them. Um, some stuff that never ended up coming to market. And, uh, no matter what we did, there is an internal relief valve inside the piston for the uh, high pressure pump on the EA824 that dumps all the pressure at 14.5 MPA. That's just the maximum amount of pressure that you can get out of those pumps. It's, it's really unfortunate um, because I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there, but it is what it is. So the other thing that I noticed is both of these motors come, came out of an SQ7 and while this one is dirtier, the aluminum itself on this motor appears to be kind of like slightly lower quality in general. And as I was looking at the aluminum on this motor, I noticed this Bentley Porsche. And I hadn't seen that on the other motor before. And I was like, huh, weird. Where is that? And come over here and it's just non-existent. You can faintly see a QR code and a, uh, like a block stamp code there, but that's about it. So something changed because they don't just arbitrarily start stamping uh, Audi or correction, Bentley Porsche on blocks. So something is different between these two and then if you come over here, yeah, you can see there's a number there. It looks like 433 underneath the uh, uh, bracket here. I should probably take that off. It's got to get transferred anyways. 433. Yeah, and then this one over here is 4710. So I'm, I'm like I said, I'm still learning a lot about these motors. Um, there's, there's a lot going on, but man... I've spent a lot of time with this motor and I absolutely adore it. And I've got a big build coming out for the shop S six in the relatively near future. Uh, <laughs> another issue you'll never have to deal with on the eight twenty five are little plastic bits getting into your intake runners. Um, yeah, that's, that's just the worst. Absolutely the worst. I had one of these drop, uh, they come off the bottom of the intercooler. If you ever pull this brick out for whatever reason, these things will slide off. They will slide down in here. They will go that way and they will get stuck inside one of these intake ports here. And you'll end up finding it either right there or it'll be stuck back here um, behind the intake manifold flap. And you'll end up getting, and it will get back to the flap at some point. Oh, good. Now I'm going to have to pick that out of there. We'll get back to the uh, flap at some point and you will get intake manifold stuck open, intake manifold stuck closed, depending on which position that it ends up getting stuck in. Um, I'd say that's like the overall kind of like general 
primary differences that I've noticed between the two motors. Um, the other, <laughs> the other big one are the, the turbochargers themselves from the factory. These turbochargers are absolute monsters. I mean, I, I cannot believe how much power they're putting out on the EA824 motor. You know, you get a set of RS7 turbos in there and you crank up the ethanol and you're looking at, you know, like 660 wheel. These are stock SQ7 turbos. And, and that, that number's quoted on a calibrated MD500. On the RS, R, correction, on the SQ7 stock turbos, I was, these turbos right here, these exact turbos, I was able to crank out 800 wheel horsepower and 900 foot pounds of torque, which is absolutely insane. And again, on an MD500 Mustang Dyno, that the shop owns that I need to get moved over here sooner than later. Uh, it's, it's hard coordinating a move of a 13 to 15,000 pound piece of equipment. Uh, not stoked about it, but it is going to replace the mess of the SQ7 engine removal space in the very near future. And then pretty soon we're gonna end up having a, a lift right here, I'm hoping within like the next 30 days. But yeah, man, they, this is like the, the biggest difference between these motors. They're just looking at them side by side. I, I still have a lot of learning to do with both of them and the platform, but rest assured there are some exceptionally exciting things on the horizon. And I, I did mention that this motor itself, this did fail on the dyno, uh, again, at 800 wheel horsepower, 900 foot pounds of torque. And I did figure out what that failure was and why it failed. And I also figured out a solution for it. And that is going to be coming out um, along with a, an additional piece of revised software where we're actually gonna end up going for more power. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I, I cannot tell you guys how much I appreciate all of the likes and subscribes. Uh, to the channel. It is it is just a, a huge help um, to getting both uh, the channel, the Manly Garage out there to more people, and then um, getting our uh, company off the ground, Lystune, so that we can continue to do the R&D that we do to bring you guys really cool products. And I, I cannot stress enough um, how excited I am to get into this platform. Um, it's, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal platform. I'm, I'm really excited about this engine bay. Like I've, I've got some wicked plans already. Some really cool things coming. Um, yeah, you guys will see, you guys will see for both of these motors, like very, very cool stuff on the horizon. And again, I, I just want to thank all of you for your support. This, as I said, is not possible without you guys continuing to, uh, one, purchase our products and, and two, like and subscribe to these videos so that, you know, eventually maybe we can uh, make a few bucks off this and buy some more go fast parts and keep making these videos for something other than uh, educational purposes only. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, have a great night. And uh, welcome to 2025. This is the first video that we have released from the Manly Garage in 2025. So, new year, new me. Stay tuned, guys.